Hello everyone! In this video I will show you my coloring process of this Goblin Queen commission. I have prepared watercolors using mostly Windsor and Newton tubes. Starting with coloring the figure first, she is the focus point of the piece, using a mixture of light orange with pink for her skin tones. I chose a double light source while the main light is coming from her right. For the shadows on her skin I mixed purple, pink and orange. I also looked up anatomical reference of women bodybuilders for her body type. Using a dark orange mixed with a little bit of purple for her dark red hair. I'm also looking at a photo reference of a red-headed model to see which exactly shades she has on the darker areas of the hair. For her suit, I use mainly purples mixed with a little bit of blue and black. I'm also leaving certain areas white. I build the coloring in layers. These areas are soon to get more colors over them. But for the meantime, I prefer to take the process slowly. And this way, the whole painting gets a little bit more depth and a 3D feeling to it. For the monsters, I looked up fantasy art images, but didn't have a specific reference for them. Using darker colors based on purple for the monsters themselves. I chose darker colors for them, so they shouldn't take the focus point off her, so they're not too bright. This way, they don't take the most of the attention to themselves, they are only a part of the background. trying to make them realistic and scary looking. Lots of reference can be found in horror concept art or in Google images. My main palette choice is based on complementary colors, yellow and purple. So there is purple mix in every shadow on the painting, over the monsters, over her suit and over her skin tone shadows. I chose yellowish orange for the background to enhance the focal point of her head. So the brightest area is behind her head and the contrast of her dark red hair is popping against it. I'm also mixing yellow on the light source over her suit as well. The light has color reflections to it and this way it looks a little bit more realistic. Adding a bit more depth to the background while imagining sort of a fiery mood behind her.
after the watercolors layer got dry, adding a bit of Copic markers. The Copic markers do sort of a smoothening effect over the watercolors. Due to their alcohol in them, they tend to smoothen the surface of the color layers of the watercolors beneath them. I'm using mostly purple Copic markers over her suit and over her shadows. Adding colored pencils afterwards. I love using Caran d'Ache watercolor based pencils the most. I'm using also Albert Durer watercolor pencils. They are great too. They have just a little bit of a different texture to them and they have a softer feeling. The watercolor pencils help the texture get even smoother and they seem to add more depth, especially when you work in layers. Time for highlights. Using white gouache for the highlights, keeping it very dense so it will pop over the colors. The highlights shouldn't be on every surface of the piece. You can take a flashlight and light an object from the side and you will see the light source reflects on certain areas alone. I chose the main highlights on her hair and body to make her pop more than the monsters in the background. At the edges of the gouache highlight, I added a bit more water to dilute it and to make it look as if it's glowing. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching my process. I hope you enjoyed the video.